Hello and welcome to the 58th episode of the Sock Bunny Knit and Fit video podcast. My name is Kimberly, also known as Sock Bunny, and today is Friday, October 19th, 2012. Thank you so much for joining me today. I um, am Sock Bunny pretty much everywhere on the interwebs. The podcast can be seen on iTunes or YouTube, or you can watch it on the blog at sockbunnyknitandfit.blogspot.com, and the email address is sockbunnyknitandfit at gmail.com. I do have uh, podcast buttons for sale for $2, and that is to, <laughs> there we go, to um, help pay for postage for prizes and stuff like that. And I do send them with some candy. So if you would like a podcast button, you can send me $2 via PayPal. And the address for that is SockRabbit at gmail.com. Or you can send me $2 snail mail, and you can just send me um, uh, a personal message and ask me for my address, and I will give that to you. So uh, thank you so far. So, thank you for everybody who has uh, supported the podcast so far by purchasing buttons. And I am including buttons in every um, order through the Etsy shop. Uh, I was going to try to set them up to where you could uh, pay for them, but on Etsy I totally forgot that you can only sell things that are either vintage or things that you made, and since I did not make these buttons, then I didn't feel comfortable listing them. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put them in each order. So let's move on. Um, we have a contest going on right now in the group called What is Your Favorite Rack? rack or random act of kindness and that is running through the end of October and the last drawing that I will do out of there is uh, going to be the first podcast in November so you still have two more episodes to try to win a prize this week since today is Carrie's birthday she's knit pearl girl on uh, Ravelry and she also has a uh, video blog that she uh, had taken a small break from and she's back recording now she has designed several shawl patterns. So I decided that in honor of her birthday, I would give away one of her patterns. I drew the winner right before I started uh, recording, and the winner was number 23, who is Knitting Rose, who is Lise. She has a podcast, uh, which is called Knitting Rose, and she also is a dyer, and if you've been watching for a while, you might remember last, uh, oh gosh, was it last summer or last fall, I had actually knit a shop sample for her. Uh, I knit a pair of socks out of her yarn for her. So uh, congratulations, Lise. Let me know which of Carrie's patterns you would like. And happy birthday, Carrie. <laughs> I hope you have a great day. Um, let's see what is next. Oh, I have another contest going on called How Long Have You Been Crocheting? And the winner of that is going to get a pattern that was donated by... Um, where am I in my notes here? Oh, uh, Tian sent the Mansfield shawl pattern. She sent Poppy to me, and she also is donating one to the podcast to give away. And this is what it looks like. It's a crochet, crocheted shawl. And all you have to do to enter the contest, or and also the last contest, you do need to be a member of the um, Sock Bunny group. <laughs> my brain stopped for a second. You have to be a member of the Sock Bunny group to enter any of my contests. And uh, for this one, all you have to do is post in the correct thread and say how long you've been crocheting. And uh, she did let me know um, one of the things that you do in this pattern is called a foundation single crochet. And she d said that she does have a tutorial on how to do that on her uh, blog, which is um, knitdesigns.blogspot.com. Actually, I think I tried that and it didn't work. I will post um, in the uh, in the on the on the blog and in this week's thread on Ravelry. I will post her link because I think when I tried knit designs, it didn't work. It went somewhere else. So um, anyway, I'll uh, tell you what her actual thing is if you want that tutorial. <laughs> okay. Um, I do have some exciting news. I contacted Denise from the Knitting Den podcast and asked her if she wanted to do a knit along. So we're going to do a knit along together in December and January. It's going to be a variegated sock knit along. And the socks will need to be started 
December 1st or after, and it's going to run until January 31st. I'm going to have several prizes, and one of the prizes that I already know I'm going to give away is uh, Deborah Tomasello, who uh, has patchwork by Debbie. The, uh, she has a lot of color work patterns. She also has a couple of variegated sock patterns. So she's going to be giving one of those away as a prize for that particular uh, knit along. So there'll be more uh, information about that coming up. But just keep in mind, uh, December 1st through January 31st, uh, Denise and I will be having a uh, co-podcast knit along. Um, I do have other exciting news. Uh, Rachel and I are going to be driving up to Rhode Island the week after Christmas. Um, the week after Christmas at my older daughter's school, Sarah is my older daughter. She goes to college in Rhode Island. She, uh, her school has Sisters Weekend the week after Christmas. So instead of flying Rachel up, um, it's going to be about the same cost for Rachel and I to drive up. So Rachel and I are going to get to go on a road trip, which we both are wondering if we're going to end up killing each other. <laughs> because <laughs> we aggravate each other so much so that should prove interesting and uh, one of my friends Michelle that you might have heard me talk about a few times she's my knitting mentor she lives up there so I'm gonna be staying with Michelle and um, so that should be really really fun I'll tell you more about that as the time draws closer but uh, we made the final decision this week that that's gonna happen so I'm really excited um, okay, so what are the topics for today's podcast? Today's topics are fitness, finished objects, works in progress, knit and crochet alongs, spinning, look what I made, stash enhancement, tips and tricks, charity, favorite things, and what I am watching and reading. So, the fitness along. We are having a fitness along in the Sock Bunny group. If you work out on any day, if you work out at least 30 consecutive minutes, you could post an entry into the Sock Bunny group, put one workout day per um, per post, and uh, the first podcast in November, I will draw a winner, and the winner is going to win either a five dollar giftable pattern, or they will win um, some yarn or fiber dyed by me, and up to three colors. So. Uh, I did want to show my poster because I haven't shown it in a while, and I ha and I wish I had more progress on it. But between being so sick with my allergies, which are still bothering me, and I probably sound really nasally today. Um, between that and Janie dying and all the craziness, I haven't done as much mileage as I wish that I had. But it's never too late, and you should never give up, right? So here's my poster, and if you're a new viewer, what I do is I track my workouts um, on Spark People. SparkPeople.com. I'm Bunny Sock Bunny 66. If you want to uh, add me as a buddy on there, and I track my fitness minutes and my fitness mileage, and I reward myself with knitting goodies. I haven't done my minutes poster yet, and frankly, my mileage poster is not even completely done, but it's done enough to work. So what I'm working towards is I am working towards uh, a thousand miles. That could be I could swim it, bike it run it, walk it, whatever I do for the mileage, a thousand miles and I get to go stay at a hotel at Disney World and for a week or at least five days. So the hotel that I want to stay at is a contemporary hotel. So what I did on the poster is I put a couple of pictures of the contemporary hotel at Disney that I want to stay at. And then I, if I can uh, show more of the poster, I numbered one to a thousand. And I did buy, they make poster board that has a pre-printed grid on there. It's very, very faint. So it made the doing the numbers relatively easy. So, um, and every time I do a mile, I get a sticker. <laughs> and I am at, I've done 71 miles towards my thousand. And that honestly should be way further along than it is. But like I said, between being sick and Jamie dying, those are my excuses. So um, I also am doing, um, uh, prizes at different mileages. Like when I got to 40 miles, I earned a manicure, which I haven't done yet. At 80, I'll get a pedicure. I'll probably go do both those on the same day. So I'm almost to the pedicure. And you can see that I also have put some other things in like books and bags and other things like that, that I want to earn. So if there's something that I want knitting wise, instead of just buying it, I'm making myself earn it with the mileage. And I, and I do need to do a poster like this for the minutes. I just haven't done that yet. Let me put this back up. Another thing is 
Another reason that I wasn't that motivated to use the poster is I had it out here in my knitting room and it wasn't that motivating. So I moved it into the bedroom by the bedroom door. So every time I walk out of the bedroom, I see the poster and that's more motivating to want to put the stickers on there. So that's just another little hint. Put your poster where you're actually going to see it multiple times a day. You know, and also um, I do plan on moving the poster like every month or so because you know after a while when something is in the same spot all the time, it you don't see it anymore. So like next month I'll probably put it on the back of the bathroom door or something like that just to make it, you know, more visible to me because it's in a different spot. So that's that. Um, so please, if you are working out at least 30 minutes on any day, feel free to join the. Um, the uh, fitness along and all you have to do is be a member of the sock bunny group so you can win either a pattern or some yarn or some fiber uh, let's see oh uh, I think I might have mentioned last week that my husband signed uh, Rachel and I up for um, the the YMCA so we decided that we're gonna take some various classes to see what we like and I had taken a spinning class not a yarn spinning class, a bicycle spinning class, uh, probably about six years ago, and I didn't really like it. Um, it really hurt my bottom. <laughs> um, so, but I decided to give it another shot. So on Monday they had a um, beginner's spinning class, so I figured that was the perfect thing for me. So I took the class and I really liked it. It was an hour long. Um, the teacher was awesome. She was very laid back and very helpful before class started she got me set up on the bicycle showed me how to adjust it gave me advice told me i was going to hate her about halfway through the class and was just very very helpful and there were um, several other people in the class were super nice and helpful and stuff like that so um it was really cool uh what they do in a lot of spinning classes is they have you in a dark room so this was a dark room and they had the walls it's a very long narrow room and there's bicycles on each side of the room and then the instructors at the front of the class if you've never taken a spinning class and uh, they had painted the walls black and then um, she had all the lights out except for like a spotlight so then when the class started she flipped a switch and a floor uh, some fluorescent black lights came on and they had splattered uh, fluorescent paint all over the wall so that was really cool and then they played the music really loud and it's really cold in there so it's almost I felt like um, during part of the class especially during um, the warm-up and the cool down it was almost like a meditation type situation where I was very um, zen you know in the zone and, and um, it was actually very um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for except maybe meditative, you know, which just really was a very nice experience. And um, I didn't, okay, my goal was to pedal through the whole class. Because <laughs> pedaling for an hour, you know, in a spinning class, you know, that's a pretty big deal for a beginner spinner. So I did pedal through the whole class, and I even stood up a few times because, you know, you have, they have you standing up. Uh, um, something I didn't really know before is that when you take the spinning class, the bicycles that they use there, the wheel that you're spinning around is actually heavy. She said it was 43 pounds. So even when you're not um, really, really working hard, even if you're working Put, even if you're just doing regular pedaling, you're actually pushing 43 pounds. And you're not just pushing it, you're lifting, uh, because they, you strap your foot into the pedal, so you're lifting um, and pushing. So I paced myself, I made through the whole class, like I said, I you know, worked out, I mean, I, I stood up a few times. Um, when the class was over and I got off the bicycle, my legs were jelly. I mean jelly. I barely could walk. I don't know how I made it to the car. And it's funny because my husband, I had gone to like a 4.30 class and at 5.30 when the class was over, I went out and my husband was actually working out and he was looking at me and I was like, oh my gosh, my legs. So my legs, the last, let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, my legs were killing me. And I mean killing, killing. <laughs> Today they're okay, so I know for Monday's class I'll be okay again. She said it takes about three times before you get used to the class, so. Uh, but I have highly recommend it if you haven't ever taken a spinning class. And if you have taken taken a spinning class, hats off to you because it's not easy. So that was my adventure in working out this week. So uh, I definitely will be doing a lot more spinning. And 
it was awesome because I did almost 16 miles in an hour. I did 15.75 miles. I was shocked. Shocked. I thought I would do like five. I had no idea how much I was going to do. And I know the guy across from me did at least three times as much as I did. So I'm hoping like, you know, when I really get good at the spinning, my mileage, this poster is just going to fly by because... Seriously, it's a really good way to get the mileage in. So I, I will definitely be taking more spinning classes. Not only for the mileage, but I really, really, really enjoyed it. So, uh, let's see. Oh, another thing in fitness. Tomorrow is the um, put on your pink bra walk for the American Cancer Society. And I had said last week that I would be really embarrassed if I had to wear my pink bra over my clothing. And I said if I got at least seven people to donate at least five dollars that I would do the walk. And I got the donations. A lot of people have told me really like to embarrass me. <laughs> so I, uh, I don't have a total yet on my donations. I will tell you next week what the, the complete total donated is. I haven't done my donation yet. I'm going to calculate that tonight because I'm donating a dollar from each item that's sold in my Etsy shop since I, uh, pretty much since I opened the Etsy shop. And I think that's going to be around $20, somewhere around there. So, um, here's what the email looks like just so you can get an idea. I won't be wearing a pink, uh, wig, not this year anyway, but you can see it's uh, put on your pink bra making strides against breast cancer. So that's going to be the walk tomorrow morning. And my husband is going supposedly as moral support, but I think he's going to see, you know, all the girls in their pink bras. <laughs> so it should be really fun. Uh, Rachel was going to go, but she started working at a job recently and she's going to work tomorrow. So she's not going to go, but um, it should be fun. It's going to be a beautiful day and it's going to be, I'm sure I'm going to laugh a lot. So and it's for a good cause, so there you go. As much, as embarrassed as I will be, it's worth it. So, I will definitely take lots of pictures and video to show. So, uh, there might be a bonus episode either before or after next week's episode. So, okay, let's talk about the actual knitting part of the podcast, shall we? Um, knitting and crocheting. Okay, finished objects. I did finish quite a few things this week. A lot of little things. I finished my Kindle cover. And I love it. I uh, Last week, I think I had everything done except for the flower. I can't remember if the strap was done last week. but No, because the strap wasn't done last week. So I did do the strap. I crocheted it. I first had knit one, and I didn't like how it turned out. So I crocheted it. And I crocheted the flower. And it's amazing how different hand spun looks when you crochet it versus knitting it. I love, 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 love. I love making stuff that I can actually use around the house. So that's one thing. And that's just a pattern I made up. I think I cast on 56 and just basically knit a tube. So um, there are a ton of free uh, cozy patterns on Ravelry. Um, but if you have any specific questions about that one, just let me know. Next, I did finish the second hat that I'm doing for the uh, charity that I'm currently doing. And this is the hat that I made out of some yarn that I had dyed. This is some uh, various shades of gray that I care, I uh, kettle dyed. And this is the uh, Lost Banner Hat by Susan B. Anderson. It was a gift, a pattern gifted to me by Heather WB. And I entered this into, oh, I forgot to say, I entered you know, I love my knit-alongs. If you are a new viewer, I'm obsessed with knit-alongs. Obsessed. <laughs> so I entered this into um, Apple Blossom and You, Dramatic Knits, Knit Me Happy, Sassy Pants Knitter, and Wolf Farms uh, knit-alongs that they were having. And this one I entered into Apple Blossom and You, Dramatic Knits, Knit Me Happy, Sassy Pants Knitter, Knit Farms, Retro Lemon, or she had an accessory knit along and twisted strands gift knit along because she allowed a charity. So seven, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for this one. Seven knit alongs. I love entering knit alongs. It's very motivating for me. I get so much more done because of knit alongs than I would otherwise. So um, I also finished the collar that I made for Sarah for Christmas. It's called the Birth Collar, B E R T H E, collar by Karen. 
I can't say her last name, M-A-A-G-T-A-N-C-H-A-K. And this is, I hope I'm putting it on right. I haven't blocked it yet. Let's see, whoops. Okay, I'm challenged. So I'm trying to do this. Okay, let me just put it on without looking at the camera because I think that's throwing me. There we go. And um, I'm going to get her some sort of shawl pin. Hold on. <laughs> I feel like Diane from Minimals. <laughs> Diane, I know everybody makes fun of you for that. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to get her some sort of shawl pin or a brooch or something like that to put on there. Still not on right. Okay, it's not blocked yet, but you get the general idea. And it's very soft. I made it from my hand spun, which is some BFL that I got from Highland Handmaids, and I love it. Love. And I have enough. I weighed it, and I used less than half of the yarn, so I'm going to make another one. And I'm going to be putting beads, clear beads, on the next one. I got these uh, beads at Joann's. Um, I haven't decided how I'm going to do the beads yet. Um... But I will let you know when that happens. This is not so, the next one won't be cast on right away, uh, just because the next one will be for me, and so I'll just do it whenever. Okay, enough talking about that. And that one got entered into Apple Blossom and You, Dramatic Knits, Knit Me Happy, Sassy Pants Knitter, Wolf Farms, Twisted Strands, Retro Lemon, Knit Nerd, and Knitting Den. Hi, Rachel. Rachel's leaving for work. Have fun. Um, so, uh, so that's like nine. I had to make a cheat sheet on a sheet of paper because I couldn't remember who all I was supposed to knit each one in. So what I started doing is I have a sheet of paper on my desk and, uh, each time I start a new project, I write down which, uh, knit alongs I'm putting it in. Obsessed. Okay. Um, oh, and speaking of Rachel, she completely shocked me on, I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, it was Wednesday. It asked me if I would teach her to crochet. She's the one who makes fun of my knitting so much and tells me that I'm an old lady and all kinds of stuff like that and tells me I have too much yarn, blah, blah, blah. She's really just aggravating me and teasing me. So, um, and like when Sarah started knitting, Rachel uh, told her she had gone over to the dark side and all kinds of stuff like that. Well, Rachel asked me to teach her crochet. Now, she had done, you know those ruffle scarves that are really popular right now, which basically you can knit or crochet and you just do like the little edge stitches. Um, she's done a few of those and she did, I had her crochet them instead of knit them because one, she hates knitting and two, so she says, and two, uh, it's easier I think with a crochet hook. So anyway, she asked me to make uh, help her, and she made a headband. <laughs> this is a huge deal. This is a huge deal. Uh, she found the pattern. Um, I think she might have seen it on Pinterest and then went and looked up the pattern. So it's uh, pretty much just basically double crochet. She used some of my sparkly yarn, but she's a girl, and girls like sparkles mostly. Um, she got really frustrated with the cast on, so I ended up I did make her do it a whole bunch of times before, but you know, you know your own child and you know their, thre their threshold of stress. And I knew that if I kept pushing her with the cast on and making her do it on her own, that she would stop and I didn't want that. So I went ahead, after she tried it a bunch of times, I did the cast on for her and did the first row, first couple of rows. And also she got really uh, frustrated with, um, there's a crocheted border. So I did the crocheted border for her because she couldn't get it to look even and her stitches. Because, you know, when you first start, you got to get your tension and all that kind of stuff. So I did the border for her so it would look nice. So this is a joint project. It's actually really cute on her. So she's going to be making several. And she found one that was a more complicated one. That has it's it's a crocheted thing, but it looks like it's got cables and it has triple crochets and all this kind of stuff. So I told her I would just do that one for her, and she said she would make one, another one of these for me in return. So, you know, she seems to like it, and she actually went to the library and picked out a bunch of books on crochet. I could not be more shocked. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, as some people have told me, I need to hide my stash, which I do, because when she picked out the yarn for her other, uh, the one I'm going to make her, she picked out some really nice uh, Cascade 220, and I was like, darn, I was hoping she'd pick some cheap acrylic, though. 
Anyway, I don't mind sharing for if it means that we can sit next to each other on the couch and knit and crochet and, you know, have a good time and laugh and all that kind of stuff. So, okay, so those are finished objects. Works in progress. I have several. I'm still working on the bed socks for Sarah's classmate. Um, here's the first one. It's done. On the second one, I think I, I'm either, I think I might be done with the gusset decreases. But here's the second, whoops, here's the second one. And this one will most likely be done this week. This is uh, some yarn that I hand dyed in reds and purples and blacks. So those are bed socks. I call those bed socks for April for Sarah's classmate. And then we have um, some plain vanilla socks. This is the uh, oops, what did I just drop? The groovy colorway by Lollipop Yarns. I'm on the second sock, and I can't remember where I was last week. I think I was somewhere around here. I only got maybe an inch done this week. And this is just a plain vanilla sock with an afterthought heel. The first one's done already. And this is the first sock. And this is some uh, sparkly yarn that I dyed for the heel and the toe. I love, I can't wait to finish these. This yarn is very squishy, so I'm really, really excited about that. And the honey cow is almost done. Ooh, I think that's what I dropped. Yes. The honey cow. This is for the knit along for um, Wolf Farms for her uh, harvest cakewalk. And it's using cakewalk yarns, which I love this is the sincerest colorway and I am almost done um, the, this is a free pattern by Madeline Tosh um, let me get it to where it's not all tangled up and they have you uh, in the pattern they have you make it six inches wide I don't need a six inch wide um, cowl here no I'm in Florida so uh, it's more very warm here I mean it's not as it doesn't snow let's just put it that way so here are, um, you can see that I had modified the pattern and I did some beads. I think I have two or three rows to do and then I can bind off. So this will definitely be done this week and it's going to be pretty long. I think I cast on like 200 for this. It's a very, very, very easy pattern of um, slip stitches and pearls and stuff like that. So very simple. A beginner could definitely do this pattern. So that should be done this week also. Um, let's see. Coco the Canister Monster got no love this week. I thought I brought it in, though. Did I lose it? Yeah, I guess I did. I thought I had brought it in to show you anyway, but um, that's a, a, a monster that I'm making out of some hand spun. Um, so that... I need to go to the uh, craft store and get some felt for the mouth and, and, and do the two arms and that monster will be done. I might crochet a flower for the monster to wear also. The Knit Girls Afghan Square Swap needs to be mailed by tomorrow. It's not going to be mailed by tomorrow. It will be mailed by Monday though, maybe Tuesday. I hate to be late, but... Um, you know, I've mailed all of them on time so far, and this one might be a few days late. Uh, depends on how much I can get done on it tonight. I, you know, well, I'm probably about half, less than halfway. I'm going to shoot for mailing it Monday. That's not too late. That's the next postal day. So uh, this um, person that I'm sending it to did not want lace, so I'm doing just a basket weave of knits and pearls. I am using... Um, Lion Brand Wool Leaves. I had bought some Cascade 220 in green. I cannot find it. I put it in a safe place. I need to start, when I put stuff in a safe place, I need to make a note in my phone where that safe place is because <laughs> I can never find it later. I'm sure when I finish this square, I will find it. But I am going to sign up for the next round, which I will probably start in January. And um, so I'll just save the green for in case somebody wants green next year. So. No big deal. It's not like the yarn's going to spoil. Um, and a project that you haven't seen since last fall, maybe last summer, I had started a crochet sampler blanket. 63 sampler stitches to crochet. And I'm doing mine out of Cascade 220 in very bright colors. And I will show you 
what I did is I actually photocopied the page from the book that has the Afghan squares. And as I do each square, I am cutting off a little piece of the yarn and sticking it on there so that I know which ones I've done and which colors. And then when I'm done, I'll put it all together. Or if I, you know, if I can finish some, whoops, some rows, I will put those together. So I wanted to show you um, the stack of ones that I had finished because it's been so long. I want to start doing a square a week until this is done. And I've gotten a whole bunch of them done. A whole bunch. Which I will just quickly flash the ones that I've done. So you can see there's quite a variety here. And I want to start doing at least one a week until this is done. Um, I was going to cast on a sock yarn blanket, another one. But I decided that I am not casting another blanket on until this one is done. And then I can do my sock yarn blanket. Some of these are really, really cute. This is my favorite one so far. And it was so easy. It looks so hard. But it's got these chain stitches that when you're done with the square, you do, you do all these loops out of chain stitches. And when you're done with the square, you weave them through each other, chain them through each other. Love that one. It's my favorite one. And so I'm doing all bright, bright, bright colors. Oops, I dropped one. And the colors are even brighter than they're showing up on the monitor. So you can see I've gotten quite a few of these done. Actually, I forgot I had this many done. And one of the reasons I want to finish this is because it's taking up space in my knitting room. And it's actually taking up an entire bin. I have these white, you could probably, you know, you can't see them today, but um, I have these white and pink bins from Ikea that I keep various things in and I label them. I put a binder clip and a uh, 3 by 5 card. This is actually my tip and trick for today, so I'm doing it a little bit early. Um, but this is how I label things with a binder clip and a 3 by 5 card. And that way, whenever whatever is in here goes away, then I can um, switch that out really easily. Or, you know, it's another project or another type of yarn. Whatever. It's very flexible. So that's my, my labeling system in here. So, like I said, that is the 63 sampler stitches to crochet. And I want to finish it. Okay, so that's all my works in progress. Um, upcoming knit alongs and crochet alongs and events. Um, after I finish the bed socks for April, I'm going to be casting on a red scarf for the um, Knit Nerd Red Scarf Knit Along. Um, I need to pick up my John John Colorwork hat and work on that. Since I'm finishing so many things this week, I can start picking up some of my older projects. Um, the sign ups for the uh, Best Friends Forever Cal Knit Along swap on the Caffeinated Knitting Podcast are through the end of October. I talked about that last week. If you don't know what that is, go over to the Caffeinated Knitting Group and check it out. It's awesome. It's going to be a fun swap. Um, knitting Blooms is having a mitten knit along. Um, and the patterns are Valerie Wood worth designs and Valerie is a friend of hers and I am this is the knit along is from November 1st to December 31st and I am going to be doing this color work pattern for that not in those colors I haven't decided which colors yet I have a lot of knit picks palette so I am not sure yet um, so this is going to be with the knitting blooms podcast I'll be doing that knit along uh, let's see. As I mentioned, um, in December and January, I'll be doing the Variegated Sock Knit Along with Denise from uh, the Knitting Done podcast. And if you want to donate prizes to that knit along, let me know. Um, and I also decided that 2013 is going to be my year of the sweater. I My goal is I want to make at least six sweaters in 2013. I'm really going to focus on it. I have at least four sweaters that I want to make for myself that I actually have the yarn for. Uh, well, or almost have all the yarn for. So I um, am going to be knitting a sweater soon, though, for Sarah, my older daughter. She finally decided on the sweater. I put it out a picture. It's not a good picture, but it's fun. It takes. Um, it's the Dania cardigan by Amber Allison. It's a cardigan. It's gray. 
She likes the gray. Um, the thing that she likes about it is the sleeves. It's very collegiate looking. And I totally could see Sarah wearing it. Uh, Sarah has the dark hair just like this girl. And I totally could see Sarah wearing this. And I'm very, very excited by the fact that Sarah wants me to knit her a sweater. So as soon as she... She, the only thing she can't decide yet is if she wants the red on the sleeves or if she wants a teal. So once she makes that decision, um, we're going to go ahead and order from Knit Picks. Um, I was going to wait and have her pick out the yarn here, but uh, I don't want to wait for until she comes home to start on it. I want to um, get started on it right away. The goal for me will be to have it done when I go up to see her at the end of December. That will be the goal. If not, I'll be finishing it while I'm up there. Uh, so those are all my upcoming knit alongs and crochet alongs. Um, spinning. I did do some spinning this week. I had purchased at the Florida Fiber Inn last month some Merino Tussa silk in this navy blue and red awesomeness. And so I, I spun the first quarter. It was 7.2 ounces total, and I spun the first quarter. And if you are a new viewer, I have a shocked ladybug wheel, which I adore. Her name is Lula Bell. I love how this is turning out. It's so shiny and so soft. It's very slippery, though, and I would not recommend this for a beginner spinner. I am really struggling with it. It's very, very, very slippery. And I'm sure that it's the combination of merino and silk that is causing it. Because merino is a little bit slippery. So this is, I don't really, I don't have a problem with regular merino, but this merino silk combination is really kicking my behind. Um, so that's what the spinning is. I did do some dyeing this week, and I wanted to show you uh, what I dyed real quick. I just did a few skeins. The first skein is called um, Orange You Special, Orange You Special. This is a custom dye that I was doing for somebody in the orange it was a actually a lighter orange than this and um, I accidentally spilled some dye on it in part of it so what I did is I just dyed it to a darker orange and then um, in uh, the area where I had accidentally spilled some dye some bluish greenish dye I dyed over that and some other parts so it's a happy accident because I think it turned out fantastic I love it so it's called Orange U Special. And here's John John's picture. My bunny. This is in my twisty base. It's 80% superwash VFL, 20% nylon, 400 yards, 100 grams, two ply. And I by me. Um, and the Etsy shop is sockbunnystudios.etsy.com. Yes, that's what it is. Sockbunnystudios.etsy.com. And I have a few other things. Um, I did do some California, California Flamingos, which is a flamingo pink and a black. This is also on the twisty base, which, is, again, is 80-20 BFL nylon, 400 yards, 100 grams. John John's upside down. And there's, there is um, a little bit of bear there. I really love this California Flamingo. I um, did two more skeins of Pocahontas, which is various shades of brown, dark brown, light brown, and also some aqua. That's on the twisty base as well. There's two skeins of that. And then also there's a skein of a colorway called Mermaid. Uh, last week or the week before, I think it was the week before, um, uh, the winner of the... Um, fit, fitness along chose her it's L mermaid little mermaid on uh, Ravelry she chose the colors for her colorway to be gray and purple and te and aqua teal so this is a colorway called mermaid so one's going to her and one is going in the shop so um, I did order a gigantic box of uh, yarn to dye I'm going to be doing more of the twisty base, the manly base, and the sparkle base. And also, I did order some fiber to dye. So this coming up week, I'll be dyeing some more. Um, and I didn't do any cross-stitch, but I am going to be doing some cross-stitch tonight. So Because I, if, you're, if you've watched before, I have that um, It's a Snowman Dressed Up as a Bunny. That's the cross-stitch I've currently worked on. I haven't had time to work on it the last couple of weeks, but I will be working on it tonight. 
and my Afghan square. <laughs> Uh, let's see, stash enhancement. I ordered some eyes for toys since I decided that I do sort of like toys. I don't hate them anymore. Uh, so I needed more eyes because I was almost out. And I had been buying my eyes at Joanne's, but they don't have that much of a selection. So a site that I had heard a lot of podcasters talk about is 6060eyes.com. Or she also has a shop on Etsy. If you just um, look up 6060, she might even have a shop on Artfire. Um, but just go to 6060eyes.com, and um, I've got two variety packs. The first one is 12 millimeter variety pack, and you can see there are all different kinds of eyes in here. Pink ones, green ones, cat-shaped, regular-shaped, red ones. Did I see red already? <laughs> Blue. So that's the 12 millimeter pack, and then I also ordered a 9 millimeter pack for the, for the smaller monsters. My nose is itching. So there's 10 sets of eyes in each of these, so they should last me quite a while. Her prices are awesome, customer service is fantastic, and shipping is super speedy. So very, very happy with that purchase. Again, that was 6060eyes.com. Um, and I purchased mine through Etsy. Oh, I know. Um, one of the viewers um, that is active in our group, Jan's Hands, is going to be celebrating her 70th birthday on October 23rd. Happy birthday, Jan. And for her celebrating her birthday, she sent me a present. And I think she said she was doing it for some of her other favorite podcasters, too. Uh, so she sent me a pattern, and she let me pick out a pattern. So I decided to get, from my favorite dishcloth designer, one of my favorites anyway, uh, the beach cloth set. And you can see that there's like a shell, palm tree, a bucket, a sandcastle, a fish, a seahorse, a boat, and a, what is that? Oh, a bikini. Um, my friend Michelle, the one that lives in Rhode Island, her daughter is in the Coast Guard and is, got stationed in Hawaii. So uh, I decided that I'm going to make some of these cloths for her for Christmas as a, sort of like a housewarming type housewarming slash Christmas gift because Michelle does a lot for my daughters and for me so I thought that that would be nice so so thank you Jan and happy birthday um let's see tips and tricks I already mentioned my labeling system using the the uh, binder clips and then charity um we're wrapping up the uh Pinellas Hope hats and scarves charity that we've had going on. I need to have them in my hands by October 31st if you want to be eligible for the drawings. Um, this is one of the things that you don't have to be a member of my group to join because I am going to post the people who sent them. You don't have to be a Sock Bunny group member to be in this one. I will be, um, the winner will be getting a skein of Wool Miza. I do have a skein of blue wool Miza in the works with somebody, and hopefully we'll have it. Um, I may just actually have the lady send it directly to the winner. That's probably the smartest thing to do to save on postage. Um, so if you are knitting your men's hats and scarves, please get them in the mail quickly because the Halloween will be here uh, on the 31st. That's only, what, 12 days? I don't know. I can't do math. My brain's broken today. <laughs> Um, also, I wanted to mention again the 20, 2013 Calendar of Hope. This is the fifth year of their publication, and in that five years, they have raised over $5,000 for breast cancer research. The calendar contains 14 never-before-published knitting patterns. I showed one of them last week, the uh, um, diamond dishcloth. I can't remember what diamond. I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, all proceeds of the sale of these calendars except PayPal fees goes to www.armyofwomen.org, which is an Avon website. And where you can buy this to donate is fitterknitter.com, www.fitterknitter.com. Um, okay, favorite things. This is where we're going to get silly for a minute. <laughs> My favorite this week is something that's been a favorite of mine since I was about three years old. And it's not even a thing, it's a person. And I have a confession to make. Joe is not my first husband. My first husband, when I was three, I was married to Batman. There, I said it. <laughs> yes, I have loved Batman since I was a little girl. 
I was married to him and I made my sister marry Robin. <laughs> and uh, I remember when I was little and I would be watching it and I would have my mom read to me like the bam and the pow and the whack and the ugh and all those things that would flash across the screen. And I still love Batman. I still, still, still love Batman. So <sighs> there, my confession. My first husband, Batman. Okay, what am I watching and reading? Um, this week, I didn't get to do any reading, really. Um, Rachel and I are still watching Firefly. We're about halfway through. There's only one season, so we're about halfway through that. We did um, watch the first episode of Sherlock from BBC America. I give it a 10 on a scale of 10. I would give it a 20 on a scale of 10. It was so awesome. Uh, the writing is amazing. And... Um, the way it is, I didn't know this one. We actually rented it from the library, checked it out from the library. It's three one and a half hour episodes, and we watched all three of them in one go. It's just the first episode in particular was amazing. I'm telling you, the writing is incredible. Incredible. So that's what we watched this week. Um, I guess that's about it. Thank you so much for watching and uh, hanging in here this long. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you have a great week and keep on crafting.